What do you do when you try to keep out the competition, but they still find a way in? Well, if you're the comic book industry that damn near collapsed one week into the lockdown, you'll whine about movie star Keanu Reeves crowdfunding the comic because somehow that takes money away from projects no one was actually supporting. I'm still trying to figure this one out. The far lefties in the comic book industry are mad over the comic book Berserker because Boom Studios is publishing it and decided to launch a Kickstarter campaign to get more interest in the book by offering Kickstarter exclusive versions of the three part series. I'm failing to see the problem, but I've heard there is one. As best as I can guess, I think it's that these people really believe that the same people backing Berserker would back whatever woke comics these people put out and that Boom is somehow stealing the attention and money of indie creators who weren't using crowdfunding anyway because companies like Boom would publish their woke comics, and that now they actually have to compete with other people to sell their books instead of fudging the numbers to make it look like they're actually successful. In other words, these people just need something to bitch about, and this is it because nothing else is happening. The comic book industry shuffled its way through the shutdown, not that you can tell because no one's actually talking about comics. Marvel's got 18 events going, DC's restructured into Marvel 2017, cause that went so well for Marvel, and literally the biggest thing happening in comics right now is that Keanu Reeves is writing a comic book. Nothing else is happening. Just as the far left wanted. So now they need something to focus on, something actually successful, like crowdfunding, and that's why these people are losing it over Berserker, while pretending to support crowdfunding. They really don't like either because they don't like competition or having to earn anything. And that's what crowdfunding is. You have to give people a reason to support your project, and you're going to need more than the usual I have the right politics mantra. So we end up with this Game Raiders article taking shots at Boom for using Kickstarter as a method to market a comic because how dare they use a different method to promote and sell a book that's proven successful and popular in recent years. From the article, quote, Crowdfunding in comics arose as a way for comic creators to fund comic projects that wouldn't necessarily fit within the traditional comic book publishing structure. How do you get it wrong in the first sentence? People started crowdfunding comics back when Kickstarter first began. It had nothing to do with their projects not fitting within the traditional comic book publishing structure. It was either that no indie publisher would publish the books or the creators wanted to self-publish but didn't have the capital to do it. Crowdfunding gave people a way to get their books out there with complete control over the product, but it also put them at the mercy of people willing to fund the book. If they were paying the creative team based on the money brought in by the campaign and it failed, they'd have a lot of people to pay. You also had the typical problem with self-publishing the books. They were late or never completed. This created a whole new drama because you could now have creators take someone's money and never deliver. And there wasn't and isn't much anyone can do about it. I'm looking at you, B. Claymore. But no, this didn't start to get around the traditional publishing structure. It started as a bottom-of-the-barrel attempt to get your book published. If it failed on Kickstarter, it was pretty much seen as no one wants your books. That held true for most things crowdfunded on Kickstarter for years until big name projects were funded using it. When Indiegogo came along, it was seen as a low rent Kickstarter and was usually a place where people who failed on or were rejected by Kickstarter went. A two minute Google search would have pulled this up, baby. She goes on, quote, but now more and more traditional comic book publishers, as well as A-list Big 2 publishing talent, have begun using Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and others to make their projects a reality. For some, having established publishers and creators begin crowdfunding projects feels like the old guard horning in on a territory for the next generation. Translation. We're afraid we're not going to be able to gatekeep anymore. I've talked about this gatekeeping phenomena that's happened within the comic book industry before. It's a high school clique at this point, complete with catty, bitchy, backstabbing mean girls running the show. The comic book industry used to be a meritocracy where talent, skill, and at bare minimum speed resulted in people getting work. It helped to be nice, but wasn't necessary. It all came down to can you turn the work in on time, is it good, and does it sell? And to be honest, you only needed to hit one of those to keep getting work. But once the industry became more insulated and exclusive, talent, skill, ability, and desire to do the work began to matter less than whether you knew the right people, had the right connections, and later had the right politics. Once it became this closed group, to the point that both Marvel and DC stopped taking unsolicited art and writing samples to find new talent, that was the point where crowdfunding started to pick up. It became an option because even indie publishers began to fall into this mode of only accepting work from people they knew or people who had the right views. At the beginning of the lockdown, the mainstream comic book industry poo-pooed crowdfunding. 
This was mostly over Ethan Van Skyver and Richard Can't Stand Demeyer having several successful campaigns on Indiegogo. The far left in industry wanted them to fail, and when that didn't work, the industry tried to smear crowdfunding as bad. That changed once they had someone, Pamela Zhang, entrenched at Kickstarter. That then became the approved platform for crowdfunding because they could control which projects would get through, which would get promoted, and who would benefit from the bump. Then in came Keanu Reeves. He John Wick the shit out their plans with his Berserker series. It was a double whammy. One, because it's published through Boom Studios, an established comic book publisher that really doesn't need to crowdfund a comic. This is purely a matter of marketing and getting more money. And two, it's Keanu Reeves. Everybody likes Keanu Reeves. There's nothing not to like about the man, but more importantly, he has more power and clout than anyone in the comic book industry. He's actually famous, actually beloved, and actually powerful. These people have no control over him and can never hope to. This is similar to Sylvester Stallone crowdfunding the comic with your boy Zack. There's nothing they can do about it. So they do what they normally do. Flip the fuck out. Quote, One of the most recent crowdfunding projects by a major establishment has been Boom Studios Berserker series. You know, the comic Poe written and kind of starring Keanu Reeves. Look at the screen. I copied this from the site so you can see that's not an ad lib. She actually typed kind of starring Keanu Reeves. That just shows how tone deaf and petty these people are. They want control but don't have it here. So now they're going to complain about Boom Studios encroaching on a territory these people were mocking just a few months ago in the middle of a shutdown as the comic book industry burned. They still weren't taking it seriously. But now that someone like Keanu Reeves can come in and easily make over $800,000 with very little marketing, they're getting sensitive. Mind you, few of them are this successful. Most crowdfunded comics barely make their minimum, but those made by people working within the industry seem to do particularly poorly, which is shocking considering the audience these people are supposed to have. They spend all this time on social media saying the right things and having the right opinions and claiming they have this massive audience for these politically correct stories. But when the books are published or crowdfunded, they tend to fail. So when they see someone like Boom Studios and Keanu Reeves come in and hit $400,000 within 48 hours, all they can do is complain. And their complaint is really weird. That Boom is taking away their audience. How? If you can afford the $50 to buy all three trades, you can afford to buy more than one comic book. I'm sure you don't just have 50 bucks. What kind of logic is that? It's gatekeeping logic. They're afraid because they don't control Keanu Reeves. And they weren't expecting the Ultra Woke Boom Studios to try to reach as many people as possible instead of the usual move of only marketing to the Twitterati. Now, when Berserker was announced and these people lost their minds, I just let it slide because it was funny to watch them have to deal with actual competition and then realize they can't compete. Nothing they put out is going to excite people, let alone bring in new readers. So they pitched a fit about how it's unfair for Boom to crowdfund a comic when Boom admits it doesn't need the money. Yes, yes. Sound more bitter than a bag of vinegar potato chips. That'll show them. But when that didn't work, they shifted gears to, can't we all just get along? Newsarama interviewed Kamala Zhang, Kim Jong-un of crowdfunding, to talk about how she's still trying to gatekeep after being fired from Kickstarter for gatekeeping them into significant financial loss. She was the one behind controlling the comics projects that were approved over the last few years, and is one of the reasons Sean Gordon Murphy took his campaign to Indiegogo instead of Kickstarter. It also appears she's one of the reasons Scott Snyder went to Kickstarter, because she might be part of the Whisper Network conspiring to ruin this man. Of all the people to take advice from, Zhang is really the last person anyone should talk to. She got fired for doing the opposite of her job. But no, they decide to listen to her and all she really wants to do is maintain her power and clout within the industry. Quote, Zhang says that Boom's current Kickstarter campaign for Berserker is ruffling feathers among the crowdfunding space due to its treatment of the community. I know there's a lot of buzz out there right now for Boom. Likening it to Archie Comics' fail campaign from a couple of years ago, she says. Boom is doing very fine for themselves right now, but they don't have a great reputation when it comes to paying creators, specifically BIPOC, queer, and trans creators. You see that? That's called poisoning the well. She has no argument. The campaign has already made over $800,000, and it's very unlikely that Keanu Reeves, a man known for his generosity, wouldn't pay the other creators. So what's the point of mentioning Boom's reputation in context to this campaign? There isn't any. She's just trashing them to get people to A, think the campaign will fail, and B, to think Boom Studios is racist, homophobic, and transphobic, so people won't support Berserker. Never mind that Keanu Reeves is mixed race. Then she says, quote, But another thing is that if you read their campaign page, 
it really doesn't have the community in mind. There's no sense of gratitude or humility in that campaign, which is fine. If that's the route they want to go, that's the route they can go. That's their choice. But they don't seem particularly concerned with ruffling feathers because they're doing very well. Translation. I'm mad because they don't need me. Because that's all it sounds like. Zhang is over here like, It was me. We survived because of me. And Boom is like, Can or looks after us now. We don't need you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the campaign's presentation. Nothing in it says that they don't care about the backers. Nothing in it says they're trash and comic book fans. Everything about the campaign is basically, do you want to see Keanu Reeves kill scores of people again? Yes. And then buy this book. That's it. That's all it is. There's no attack on the community, whatever that's supposed to mean. They're just selling the book in exactly the way you should. By hyping it. You're just salty that the campaign was successful and they didn't need to go through you to do it. Then Jung switches tactics, quote, the groundswell for crowdfunding has been about the engagement between the project and those funding. At its base, it is a business-customer relationship. But Zhang argues many backers are coming in on the ground floor so that they can feel like a part of something, like a part of the creative process. No one thinks that, Pumpkin. They're just supporting a project. No one thinks they're part of the team. This is just a way for them to support a product they believe they'll enjoy. That's it. And then she says, quote, one of the things is that a lot of the publishers see Kickstarter as just a pre-ordering platform and nothing more, Jung says. And if you treat Kickstarter like a pre-ordering platform, it doesn't always work in your favor. One of the reasons why Archie, in my opinion, failed is because they really didn't understand how to treat backers. You would be the expert, what with you being fired for literally not having successful campaigns and blocking potential campaigns because they didn't share your politics. You're also wrong. Most people have a click it and forget it attitude about crowdfunding. They see a project, they decide to back it, and wait until it arrives. They may check for updates, especially if the book is late, but few people seem to fixate on a campaign. They just place their order and wait. Now, if you wanted to build a fan base for the project, you wouldn't do it once you started the campaign. You'd do it before, and on a different site, like Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, where you could actually have substantive interactions with fans and backers. This is one of the reasons why Jawbreakers and Cyberfrog were so successful, and one of the reasons why Sean Gordon Murphy's campaign didn't do as well as it could have. You need to create a presence first if your goal is to have a fan base or community. You can't do it after the project starts, and definitely not on Kickstarter because the platform isn't built for that. Which is why it's so stupid that Scott Snyder turned to Zhang to help him put out Noctera, which is being published by Image Comics, oddly enough to no one's complaint. Image has far more money in industry clout than Boom Studios, but for some reason, it was that the latter was crowdfunding a comic that pissed people off. Now, Snyder is an interesting guy because he doesn't need Jung to do anything for him. He's got the name recognition and the fan base to be successful if he interacted well with his fan base. But Snyder has a problem. The Whisper Network wants to cancel him. This is a cabal of Karens within the comic book industry who collude on super secret Legion of Doom Facebook groups to destroy anyone more successful, talented, and skilled than them, or because they're just being spiteful bitches, whichever one catches their fancy that day. So it looks like he's doing whatever he can to play their game, so that his ma'am doesn't try to fake me to him like this person did to Sean Gordon Murphy a few months ago. So Snyder goes along with this nonsense about using Kickstarter to talk to fans, and I'm like, dude, start a YouTube channel. You don't need to talk to people on Kickstarter. You can talk to them directly in a video that can be shared with millions of people instantly. You'll get more organic support that way, more interactions, and more importantly, you'll have control. You don't need to go through a gatekeeper like Zhang to do this. Just ask your boy Zach, he demands Skyver, John Malin, Doug Tanopel, or Mark Pellegrini and Tim Lim. Ask Peter Sumetti about how well he's running a small press publishing house, but I having to go through these people. You don't need them to be successful. This is why they got pissy with Murphy. He didn't need them to get success, and he didn't rely on them either, so they had to take him down. And I think this is why so many of these far lefties in the comic book industry are nervous about publishers using crowdfunding. It's because the publishers will know a lot about marketing a book. Most creators aren't very good with people, so when they have to sell a book on their own, they have a problem. They've alienated so many people with their antics and politics that their potential pool of backers is small, and these people are such backstabbers that they can't fathom the idea that someone can support two campaigns at the same time. The industry can't work like this. You can't have this attitude that a method of growing the industry must be off limits to the people who have a better chance of legitimizing that method. It helps the comic book industry that Stallone and Reeves would support crowdfunding a comic book. These are two well-known beloved action stars. You want this because your project might pop up after someone backs these books, especially on Indiegogo. 
Bitching about this is like bitching that the expected blockbuster is coming out months before your film and your trailer is running in front of it. What's the problem? People can watch more than one movie. People can back more than one project. People can buy more than one comic. I know this because that's why I have over 4,000 comics. I have enough money to spread it around. Let me give you my money and let people take my money. Stop trying to control what everyone does. Stop trying to gatekeep people from being part of the industry or you'll find yourself with no one left to gatekeep. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.